Hey gang, welcome to your second Python 3 tutorial where we're going to take a look at how to install Python on your computer. Alright then, so I guess the first thing we need to do is install Python on our computer so we can use it. Now since I'm running Windows, I'm going to show you how to install it on Windows, but if you're running on a Mac or you're using Linux, then what I'm going to do is leave two links down below. Each link is going to be a guide as to how to install on each operating system. Either way, it's pretty simple. I'm going to crack on with how to install on Windows. Now, first of all, you might not need to install Python at all. It might already be installed on Windows. So to check if you've got it installed, open up your command prompt. I'm using Commander. Type in Python, then hyphen capital V. If you get this message, Python is not recognized, then we need to install it. If you get a version number back, then you've got it installed, okay? So for those of us who do need to install it, what you want to do is head to python.org and then hover over downloads and you'll see two versions here, Python 3.6 and 2.7. Now, since this course is all about 3.6, we're going to download this one. So click on that to download it. I've already downloaded it. It's right here on my desktop. So I'm going to double click that now to run the installer. And before you click install now, what I want you to do is make sure you've got this checkbox ticked right at the bottom. Add Python 3.6 to path. What that is going to do is edit your path environment variable so that you can run Python from anywhere on your computer in the command line rather than just running it from the directory that it's installed in. OK, so once you've got that checked, install now and just walk through the installation steps. All right, setup was successful and not that I distrust this or anything, but let's just check it was installed correctly. So again, I'm going to type in this time Python hyphen V again, and we get 3.6.1 back. Cool. So now it's installed. If you still get the same message, first of all, try clicking off this console and restarting it and typing Python V again. Sometimes you need to do that. Sometimes you don't. So before we start writing any Python code, I mentioned in the last tutorial that Python was a high level language. And that meant that it abstracted away from machine code, which meant it was easier to read and write programs. So computers don't automatically understand Python code. The code has to be passed through a Python interpreter. So what is this interpreter? Basically, it's a shell which a Python code is going to get pumped through in order to execute. And that could either be us writing code in the shell itself or running a whole Python file through the shell. So now if I say Python right here, what this is going to do is start the interactive Python shell. And I can type Python code here now, and it's going to run through the Python interpreter and execute. So let me just make this a little bit bigger, first of all. Now, if I type something like one plus two, that's a valid Python statement. I'm going to get three back, you know, three plus five. I'm going to get eight back. So now we can run Python code in this shell. And a way to know that you're in the shell is these three little arrows right here. OK, so when we type Python in the command line, then it's going to run Python 3.6 for us in the shell and we can see that by these three little lines so we can practice python here it's really good to practice all the basics and we're going to be doing that for the first few lessons of this series but what we can also do is run whole python files through the interpreter as well so first of all to exit this interactive shell we can say control z and then enter so now we're back out of the shell. And if we wanted to run a whole file, say we have a file that was in the Sean directory. OK, if we want to run that file through the Python interpreter, we can say Python, first of all, then the file name. And it's going to have a PY extension for Python. So if we click enter, obviously, it's not going to run anything at the minute because this doesn't exist. But if it did, if we click enter, it's going to run that Python file for us now. And any feedback that was coming out from that file will get here in the console. So there we go. Now we have Python installed on our computer. In the very next lesson, we're going to start playing around with Python and we're going to start by looking at numbers.